She was a model and the TV presenter. If anything happened to her face, I go back. Welcome to Shonya Studio. In this playlist you can watch crime stories from all over the world, where apart from gaining knowledge about crime stories in other parts of the world it can also provide knowledge about, for example, the culture and habits of the people in that country. Don't forget to like share and subscribe to this channel if you like our video. Thank you. The story about, Katie Piper is quite heartbreaking, but there is a tireless struggle, to stay alive, no matter what the circumstances. How important it is to be optimistic, because it bears sweet fruit. We will discuss this shocking case, in a moment. This time, we will get to know a woman, whose full name is, Katie Elizabeth Piper, who was born on the 12th of October, 1983. She comes from Andover, Hampshire, England. But many people know her, by the name, Katie Piper. Her father was a barber. And Katie is a very cheerful girl, and likes everything related to, fashion and beauty. That's why, when she graduated from high school, Katie took a college related to, her passion. While studying, Katie is taking a course to become a beautician, while studying design. Shonya Studio is a channel of crime stories from around the world. Please you like and subscribe this channel if you like our criminal stories. Thank you. As I said earlier, Katie has many desires and ambitions, that she wants to realize, while working as a beautician. It is said that she also often participates in casting, to become a model for several fashion magazines, or advertisements. She has big dreams. Katie has a record as runner-up, for the Miss Winchester Beauty Queen, event in 2006. So it's not impossible and everything, is done completely by Psychopath. Katie. If we go back to 2008, it seems like the social media, that was successful at that time, was Facebook. Many people share all their photos, and files on social media. Including Katie Piper, who is famous for being beautiful and friendly. This then made a martial arts athlete named Daniel Lynch, start to dare to greet and send messages, to Katie on Facebook. And it looks like, Katie also gave the green light. Then they started chatting and replying, to each other's messages. It is said that, they went on for several months just chatting, via their Facebook account. Finally, Daniel had the courage to meet Katie directly. And this makes Katie happy. Moreover, at that time, they were both single, so it was very suitable. They are also the same age, both 25 years old. Finally, Daniel Lynch was brave and met Katie, in Reading, Berkshire, which is not far, from Katie's place of work. It turns out, that after they met, they actually admired each other even more. After a few days of approaching, they finally started dating. According to Katie, she really likes Daniel Lynch, but his sweet love, is only at the beginning. It's true that entering the second week of dating, it seems that, Daniel is starting to show, overprotective behavior, excessive possessiveness, and even likes to speak harshly, curse and doesn't hesitate to slap, if Kathy goes against what Daniel says. Well, Katie is starting to feel, that this is actually becoming very toxic, in their relationship. Sometimes Danielle's possessiveness doesn't make sense, 
For example, they go to a cafe, and Katie smiles back at the male cashier, in the cafe, who is serving her. Daniel can immediately get jealous, angry and use Katie to call her, a cheap girl. There was also one time, when a policeman on the street, greeted Katie and asked for a photo. Daniel then went berserk and hit Katie, on the head very hard. Not to mention protests about the way Katie dresses, her cleavage cannot be visible, her skirt must be below the knee. Until it was said that on the 1st of March, 2018, at that time Daniel Lynch invited Katie, to meet at a hotel. That's when Katie felt the time was right, to say goodbye to Daniel. She couldn't stand dating anymore, in just two weeks, she had already received a lot of painful treatment. That's why as soon as they arrived at the hotel, Katie immediately said, she wanted to break up, but Daniel didn't seem happy with this. He then hit Katie in the face very hard, took a razor from the bathroom, and threatened Katie. He said that if Katie asked to break up, he wouldn't hesitate to cut Katie's neck, and hang her. But it seemed that Katie was still fighting, and out of nowhere it turned out, that Daniel had a knife and stabbed Katie several times, in the arm and back. Katie then screamed and ran away. She was helped by the hotel and was rushed to hospital while Daniel was later arrested by the police. A few days later then he was released a few days later, because he paid bail, but he was put on probation, and was not allowed to approach Katie, within a 5 km radius. Katie recovered within two weeks. A few weeks after the attack, it is said Daniel began contacting Katie again. From SMS and messages on Facebook, to apologize, and want to get back together. He texted the words hundreds of times in one day, basically saying, he wanted to be his boyfriend again, and promised to be a better person, he said he wanted to repent. But it seemed like Katie, didn't want to go back anymore, and said nicely, that they would be better off, just being friends until then on March 31, 2018. Daniel said, he told Katie to go to an internet cafe, to read the email Daniel sent. So all this time, they chat on Facebook accounts, they have to come to an internet cafe, it's not as easy as, we do now who use messenger, on our cell phones. Until then, Katie went to the internet cafe, to read the email from Daniel. In CCTV shows, when Katie headed to the internet cafe, she met a young man, who was seen crossing the road, wearing a hoodie, holding a glass. The man's appearance was a bit shabby and Katie thought, that maybe this man was a homeless person, holding a coffee cup and wanting money. Well, Katie is indeed a good person, she then tried to take money, out of her bag, while approaching the man with the intention of, giving him money. However, it turned out, that this unknown man then poured, the contents of the glass he was holding, into Katie's face. The liquid is sulfuric acid. The man immediately ran away, while Katie felt heat and burning instantly, on her face. She ran into a nearby cafe. Screaming for help, because of the pain, and telling anyone to call, an ambulance. In excruciating pain. While the people in the cafe, seemed confused about how to help. While waiting for the ambulance to arrive, they couldn't even bear to see Katie's face, which was melted and partially, peeled off. Some women just tried to fan her face, some pressed ice cubes to her necks and heads. One hour after the attack, it was said, that an ambulance came, and helped Katie. Meanwhile the police also immediately came, to check the crime scene, and CCTV in the area. Because the incident was still in the daytime, and quite busy, it turned out, that there were many witnesses, even a few moments after the attack, many residents immediately chased the perpetrator, and detained him, 
in one of the shop houses, until the police came to arrest him. Who is this man? His name is Stephen Sylvester, and is 21 years old. At that time, he was told by Katie's ex, Daniel, to splash Katie's face, with acid, because Daniel was not willing, to break up with Katie. What is certain is that, Stephen wants to do it, because he is tempted by some money. Even when the incident happened, Daniel was watching from afar, to make sure, Stephen poured acid on the right person, so he didn't hit the wrong target. If we look at Katie's condition, it is quite terrible. Her nose and lips had melted, and her eyes too. Even then she lost her sight. Apparently, it was said that Katie, had swallowed some of the liquid. That's why the tongue and throat, receive special care. Also, Katie was in a coma, for 12 days. Even after that, she couldn't talk and communicated with the doctor and her family, by writing on a piece of paper. Even in one of the notes, she wrote, she begged her mother to surrender, and told her to euthanize her. But of course this was not followed. All her family and friends, encouraged Katie to keep fighting. Elsewhere, Daniel and Stefan were then put on trial, and Daniel Lynch was found guilty, and received two life sentences, for being the mastermind, behind the attack on Katie. He will not be free until his age is over. While Stephen Sylvester received a life prison sentence, but can be released on parole, after serving 16 years. In fact, in 2018 Stephen Sylvester was seen free by paying bail, and only serving 10 years in prison. While Katie underwent surgery after surgery for years. The restructuring of all parts of her face was carried out, in France, because at that time, in England some of the equipment was inadequate. Attaching fake skin to improve her face is done at a very expensive, and excruciating pain. With enthusiasm and encouragement from various parties, Katie said she slowly began to have hope, of living again. This is where Katie started writing a book, about how she lived the painful days, in her life. The chapter where all her dreams and careers have disappeared. This incident is said to be worse, than death. Even for the third year in a row, it is mandatory to wear a plastic mask for 23 hours per day. Maybe so the skin on her face, stops peeling. If we explain it quite long, the treatment and surgery, she underwent. Which is definitely all painful. Katie usually gives up several times, and intends to end her life. Katie then lived back with her parents. So that someone can take care of her. The world was quiet, at that time, because she couldn't talk. One of her blind eyes, then underwent surgery slowly. For over a decade, she has been overcoming her depression. Learned to speak again, and started to improve. Until now Katie Viper, has become a television presenter advertising star, motivator and writer who is quite famous in England. She also has a foundation, called the Katie Viper Foundation which is dedicated, to victims of acid and burn injuries, to receive treatment as good as hers. In 2015, Katie married a man, named Richard James Sutton, and was blessed with two daughters. Her husband looks very similar to her ex. What do you think? Is it reasonable for one of the perpetrators, to be released, after only serving 10 years in prison? You comment below. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like and share buttons. For those who are visiting for the first time, or often stop by, but haven't subscribed yet. Don't forget to click the subscribe button first, and turn on the notifications, so that next time, for example, if I upload a new video, you will be the first to know. And don't forget to watch all my other videos. Remember, 
stay healthy and keep doing good, thank you.